Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater, uh, Run Blog Run. It's our program, Socially in the Distance, and it's episode 27, not 37, like I said before, and it's the epilogue. Sorry about that. Yeah, I took calculus, but I still can't count. You know, I got to take my shoes off and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, I'll sip one sec. This is my Hotel Utica cup, just so you know. I went there in 2005. It's a famous hotel of the United States. It was up there for the Utica Boilermaker and the Distance Running Hall of Fame. And uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. I think Jeff Hollister, the Nike sports marketing uh, deity, was uh, honored that year. And uh, I had, hadn't had my cataract surgery, but I still have the mug. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so um, you know the deal. Stuart Wire, um, our European correspondent who lives in Oxford, England, the intellectual capital of the world. And then I'm in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, in Jefferson County, which um, was, uh, we're, uh, the state um, um, was won for the president-elect, but my county went to the current president. So it's a fascinating world we live in, isn't it? Uh, may you live in interesting times. And we do. We do. Uh, speaking of interesting times, our friend Stuart was on a briefing with the IOC um, and the Tokyo LOC about what the heck's happening in Tokyo. And he gives it a 60-40 chance that we're going to have a Tokyo Olympics in 2021. Um, uh, Mr. Bach, the president, eh, noticed that or, or commented excuse me, not noticed, but he commented that it used to be that media people could go to event to event um, in the Olympics, but we're going to probably have to have tickets now because they're going to really have to control how many people are in these facilities, indoor and outdoor. I'm not sure how much it will affect track and field because track and field is an outdoor facility. Um, if I go, I'll be sitting up in the top rows, but I'm very concerned about COVID. Are we going to have vaccines? What is going to happen? Um, while much of the rest of the world may be very accepting about the idea of a vaccine, um, the U.S. has a lot of bad talking about vaccines. I mean, the flu vaccine people, a lot of people still don't take um, and, I, you know, I've had to take it the last couple of years because of my heart surgery. I really don't spend a lot of time worrying about it. Um, there's other things that I can worry about. And someone's cutting grass in front of my house. I really? Oh, wow. They're doing leaves for us, so that's really nice. Um, so... Um, so when I, I'm just trying to hear myself. Sorry, I hope it's not bothering you guys. But hey, you know that I actually live in a real neighborhood and all those kind of things. So it's keeping it very, very special. Um, so, so what Stuart and I talked about was Tokyo, whether Tokyo is going to happen or not. And yes, he thinks it is 60-40. Uh, we also talked about funding in the UK, which is a little different than funding over here. Um, elite athletes are sponsored by shoe companies. USATF gives top athletes money. They give athletes who don't have sponsorship money, I think about $30,000. In the UK, they give the top tiered athletes who don't have a lot of funding the equivalent of $36,000. Then the those are called podium athletes. And the, the athletes who could do well, they give, I think, in about the 20 range. But on top of that, they get massage, they get medical, they get coaching, a few other things. So it's a pretty good program. The part that I admire the most is um, the way they do the relays. 23 athletes are in the British relay program, including Martin Rooney, who pretty much you give him a baton and um, he finds a way to get a medal in there. So it's a, a, a pretty good investment. And I, I, I think if you're really talking about the theme since the year 2000, you've got the re- invigoration of American track and field going from where we had always had good sprinters and jumpers, but to middle distances, distance runners and long distance runners and some of the field events that we had a dearth of experience in. Um, 
you've got the British system that after about 2003 really reinvented itself and is continuing to do well. And I think this investment in there is a big deal. My concern with British athletics is their overall funding. I think they need to make a phone call to Alan Pasco, the guy that saved them in 2002 and 2003. Um, and then what's happened in China with the technical events, because they have just become superb there. Um, and it just tells you that our sport's a global factor. Um, and um, we also talked about af athletes' integrity and the number of whereabout busts that they've been having. Elijah Managua surprised all of us, the London 2017 champion. And what did he surprise us about? Well, uh, first of all, he had some very curious excuses for missing three tests, but to his credit, he accepted the two-year ban, and he's taking it. Um, and you got to respect him for that. Um, what do I think is going to happen over the winter? Not sure. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, I'm hoping indoor meets are going to happen, but they're indoors. This is our first complete winter with COVID. So stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run, Epilogue 27, not 37. Um, and uh, this is a social, in the, uh, not social in the distance, athletics chat number 27. Uh, if you like us, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you love us, subscribe on YouTube. Larry Eater, signing off. Talk to you soon.